Hello again. With the increasingly strident demands for Britain to pay reparations for slavery, it is worth bearing in mind that this country's involvement in the slave trade lasted for less than 300 years. The first slaves were captured in Africa in the middle of the 16th century, and slavery was abolished throughout the whole of the British Empire in 1838. The only country with which we share a land border, our neighbour, Ireland, in that country, the slave trade lasted for more than twice as long as it did in Britain. Slaves were being seized in Britain and taken to the markets of Ireland as early as the beginning of the 5th century AD, and the slave trade thrived there until the Normans invaded Ireland towards the end of the 12th century. That's around 750 years of slave trading. Not a lot of people know that. St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland, was of course actually British. Nobody knows if he was from Scotland, England or Wales. What is certain is that he was captured from a coastal area of Britain by Irish slave traders when he was 16 and carried off to Ireland where he was a slave for some years. This was roughly in the year 402 AD. He was not, of course, the first British person to be taken from his home in this way by Irish slavers. The business was going for some while before that. Interestingly enough, St Bridget of Kildare, Ireland's other patron saint, was the daughter of a slave. For the next 400 years or so, slavery was big business in Ireland, with slavers raiding Britain from Cornwall in the south, all the way up to Scotland in the north. When the Vikings began to explore this part of the world in the 9th century, though, the Irish slave trade became, if you might say, turbocharged. Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, was founded by the Vikings in 841 AD as a centre for the slave trade. They too began raiding Britain and then transporting their captives to the new market at Dublin, where they were sold to anybody who wanted them. Many were bought by international slave traders and taken off to North Africa and Turkey. Over the next couple of centuries, Dublin became the biggest slave market in Europe. The cities of Limerick and Waterford were also founded at about the same time, and they too were centres for the slave trade. Ireland's economy was geared around the traffic in humans. We have to bear in mind that slavery was still common in Britain right up to the Norman invasion in 1066, when the Doomsday Book was compiled in 1086, it was found that roughly 10% of the English population were slaves. It's amusing to note that when people were making such a fuss about Bristol's role in the slave trade, which culminated in a statue being thrown in the harbour there, none of those involved seemed to be aware that Bristol was a centre for the slave trade with Dublin over 500 years before the transatlantic slave trade even began. In the early 11th century, there was a thriving slave market in Bristol, from where slaves were taken to Dublin and sold in the market there, often to overseas buyers. An eyewitness wrote at the time of what he saw in Bristol's slave market. You could see and sigh over rows of wretches bound together with ropes, young people of both sexes whose beautiful appearance and youthful innocence might move barbarians to pity, daily exposed to prostitution, daily offered for sale. It was not until the late 1100s that the slave trade in Ireland was finally brought to an end by the Normans. This then is an aspect of history which few people know of and is never spoken about. I cannot help but feel that Ireland might address this shameful history of the exploitation of Britain and perhaps make some offer of compensation towards us for all those centuries of oppression and the mistreatment of the British. If the world really wishes to embark on a programme of reparations for the evils of slavery and the slave trade, I think that we in Britain should be in line before anybody of African heritage.